First, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. <coughs> homage to the venerable Mang Liaomi. Homage to um, the Xiongrin Pushi Master Sakya Zhen Kong. Homage to the 16 Dhamma King Kamapa. And homage to Master Dukdan Tarji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. And homage to the main deity of Homa today, Dorje Pamu. Sumu, all Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma lecturers, Dhamma assistants, temple directors, all disciples present here and over the webcast, and our guest of honors today. From the Taiwan government, the Chief Secretary, Mr. and Mrs. Chen. And from Zhongshan Medical College, the, from the Plastic Surgery Department. From Pingdong Daren University of Technology, the Assistant Professor Dr. Ye, the well known program host, Mr. Tai Zhi Yuan. The producer of the program, Feng Shen Wu Shang, Mr. Li. The well-known singer in Taiwan, Mr. Xin Long. And Mr. Xin Long is going to Italy to videotape this uh, uh, M yeah, MTV for his new CD. Mm. He's going to have a new album. And ho we hope all the disciples in True Buddha School can buy his CD. But you have to tell us when is the time. Then we'll go buy it. Senior alumni of his holiness from Chinese American Chamber of Commerce of Philadelphia, USA, Mr. Zhang. Are you from year 30? And his holiness is from year 32, two years later. And students of these two years are very close. So at that time, students of two are consecutive years are very close. From Taiwan DPP head of a committee and also a com council member of a China city, Mr. Tsai. From Lotus Light Charitable Society, President Wu. From CDI TV, the producer of Illuminating Our Mind, 
Rebecca Shu, the producer of Platform Sutra and the Tantrayana Development Stages, Vajra Master Lin Yue, and the host, Dharma Sister Pei Jun, and sister to His Holiness, Miss Lu Shanmei. And we also have other guests of honors, like Dhamma's brother Qi Zhong and his mother. And today we have uh, many successful businessmen from Indonesia. Okay, they are there somewhere. Afternoon, there is a baseball game in Tokyo. Where is the baseball baseball game held in Tokyo? Yagyu is baseball. I I know that because I used to play baseball. So I used to hit my good friend because after I hit the ball, I threw away the uh, I, th- I threw away the I, th- I threw away the pitch. Then it hit my friend. So my friend, my best friend, chased me around. He got very mad. And I, I ran away too. I thought this afternoon there is an important baseball game between Taiwan and Cuba. So I thought you might be at home watching this baseball game, but you are still here to participate in this ceremony. Today we still have more than 10,000 people here. Last week, mm, you heard my voice, a little weird, a little weird, last week. And some said, yeah, his, non- his holiness, something wrong with his throat. So I coughed every night for seven days. I caught a cold. Last week I finished the Dharma lecture. But the next day, on Sunday last week, 
I painted a huge picture painting. So Dharma brother Hai Tang from City I T V asked a question, but I could not answer because I could not answer any of the questions. I lost my voice. Then the next day, this Monday, I coughed a little bit during daytime, but it was really serious in the evening or midnight, around 1.30 and 2 a.m. and coughing for one hour. Then the next day, Tuesday, Again, coughing over and over. And then the third day, this Wednesday, coughing again. Very serious. Very bad coughing. Well, I lay in the bed. Still coughing, but I snap my fingers while lying in the bed and invocate the deity, Golden Mother of, of Primordial Pond, and like talk back to her. And I said, Golden Mother of Promoting a Pound. I got the response from you, and I invoked you, and you are here. And I'm you, and you are me. That's response. That's spiritual response. I'm you, you are you. There is no difference between you and me. Then it's the spiritual response. And now I'm coughing so seriously. Is that true that you're coughing seriously too? Very bad coughing? I'm coughing badly. And how about you? And after Golden Mother heard what I say, she came and she ascended on my top and entered into my throat and to my body, but I, I was still coughing. No voice, coughing with no voice, coughing with no sound. All of a sudden, I felt my head and throat tighter. So I, f my body was tighter, and something running around in my throat and the coughing stops. Then I sleep till the morning. From that day on, from that day on every evening, I slept well till morning. Fortunately, Sometimes uh, bodhisattvas didn't respond to you. Sometimes bodhisattvas didn't respond to you when you back to them, like tenderly. But if you talk back to them or pray, pray, 
with efforts, then they will respond to you. So I talked to her very seriously. I got a spiritual response from you. Then I coughed so badly. Then you, how about you? So how do you feel when you see me coughing badly? So this is the way I talk to her. So I'm 99% well today. And just now, Vajra Master Changzi sent me the coughing uh, syrup. Syrup for me. Before I came, I had a cough, and before I ascending to the Dhamma throne, I drank another one. I have to explain to you, or you, you thought, but you thought I got a uh, drug addiction. And thank you, Vajra Master Changzi. So next time you have Mr. Chang Chi call, then I'm going to send him the coffee syrup. And he is my brother. We are like brothers. We were born on the same year, the same month, but three different three days different. And I regarded him just like the sixth Patrick. His appearance just looks like him. I have a statue of a six Patrick in Seattle. And he's a Leo Zhu, and I'm the substitute of the six Patrick. This is also a kind of a spiritual response. If you get spiritual response from the Buddhist support, then there's no difference. Everything's equal. So after you get the spiritual response, then you will have a, you will have many responses after there. Then you will know many things. And if you get the spiritual response, then you may ask him your questions. And after you get the spiritual response, then you will have a good energy. So if you perform the Bardo delivery, when you do not have enough power, then the one being delivered will fight back. Then you may visualize yourself, your main deity, your personal deity. Then, then your personal deity will take away the power against you to the space. Or if you get a curse, 
then you also may visualize yourself, your personal deity. Then the personal deity will take away the error from the other party. So then you will have a mightier power after you get the spiritual spouse. So the basic, very fundamental one of the tantrana is get, is to get the spiritual spouse. So if you get the response, then your master will take care of everything. So first of all, you have to get the spiritual response. In Tantrana, yoga means you get a spiritual response from your master and real guru. Everything talk I talked about here is to get the spiritual response. As long as you get the spiritual response, then you will be born in the Western paradise. Why did people leave True Buddha school? It's because they didn't get the spiritual response from the real guru. Without spiritual response, then they leave. If you can truly get the spiritual, spiritual response from the personal deity, you get the response from the path of accumulating merits, and get the spiritual response from your real guru, then you will be sincere <laughs> here. After you get the spiritual response, there is no difference between you and your present deity. So then they are going to take everything that is happening. Everything, all the pain, suffering, joy, anger, sadness, and happiness, he shares everything and he takes care of everything. So getting the spiritual response is very important in Tendriana. And today, our main duty is Vajabarahi. This duty is very important for those practicing the inner fire or two more. And I noticed the primary sponsors today were not very many. If you are practicing the inner fire and you don't know that you are not the primary sponsors, so Dojie Pamo is the uh, phenom emanation or the trans the phenomena of the f inner fire. Those practicing the inner fire has to visualize her from pang, the six syllable, to be calm, vajravarahi, or vajrayukini. So pang is with the circle, and um, and then below is a little bit look like a uh, triangular. From this pang to transform to become doje pang or vajravarahi, vajrayukini or from your body, 
from the navel chakra, there is a red lotus blossom that open, and then with the pang, the Vajrayogini appears. So Vajra Varahi is the Yidam for inner fire, for the generation of inner fire. And she stands on the two triangular, is the Uh, the palace for igniting the fire. And then you request your good guru to bless you. And you ask Doje Pamo for the spiritual response in your practice. And then after that, if you ignite the inner fire, the inner fire will be easily ignited. This is uh, the key point. One is fire, and that's Doje Pamo. And one is water, which is the body chakra, and that's represented by Han, six syllable, and it's upside down, dripping the light drops down, and the fire ascending and the water descending, and at your heart chakra, you start to melt the heart chakra to become the eight petal lotus blossom. So in order to see the lights of the light drums, that's where you would be able to see it. So the ascending of the inner fire and the descending of the light drops at the heart chakra. And when the heart chakra opens, you can see the light of the light drops. And only then it would be called seeing the light. So this deity is very important. So Vajra Varahi Doje Pamo is truly great. So Doje Pamo is the Yidam for inner fire. And the inner fire is ignited by her. She is truly great. Let me share you a joke. One day, John went to play out of town and he saw an eagle flying. And Xiaomi said, What a big bird. And the bird heard it. And he used the both wings to cover his secret part, and then he f fell down and died. <laughs> you don't laugh? <coughs> So, I like to tell you. <coughs> so, this is the greatest deity. Why? Because our Doje Pamo, how great is she? All the Dakinis. Oh. So all the Dakinis who are helping, the, who become spiritual companions of the great yogis are emanations of Vajavarahi. And above her is the Prasna Paramita Buddha Mother. The Prasna Buddha Mother. <coughs> She's emanated from Prasna Buddha Mother. And Prasna Buddha Mother represents wisdom, like the Ishichoka and Mandarawa of Padmasambhava. They are both emanations of Dojepa. 
and all the Dakinis are emanations of Vajravarahi. And in Chinese, it's called Hai Mu, actually. Hai means um, like pig mother because on her head, there's an ornament of a pig's head. Uh, thanks for correcting me. I said horse's head. Because I was like Hayagriva, but no, no. For Vajra Warahi, it's pig's head. Why she's wearing pig's head? It's very interesting. The Cantonese say, in Cantonese, it's like your pig's head. It's a joke. It sounds the same, but actually, they're different. So this deity is truly great. So it's the... <coughs> the leader or the combination of all Dakinis and the mudra is the same which is the mudra also the mudra of golden mother so do you know so in reciting her mantra Hombe is for stressing, and the name is Doje Pamu. So this is name mantra. To add power, Hombe to add power. Soha is let it be attained or accomplished. Perfect. <coughs> the visualization, her left hand is holding a kapala. This is a kapala. And her right hand is holding this curved knife. We call it a curved knife. The Tibetan may call it something different. So Doche Pamo has a posture. The one here at the Taiwan Temple is the uh, frontal one. Like this, and here is holding Kachanka. Left arm is clutching on the kachanka, and also Shingamuka, the lion fist Dakini, also holding kachanka, and Doje Pamu also clutching on a kachanka, and Padmasambhava too clutching on a kachanka, which is a staff with three skulls that represents greed, anger, and delusion to eliminate these three. So <coughs> they're holding kachanka. Now you can visualize. And she's wearing a five skull crown. And her upper body is wearing celestial garment. Oh no, actually. Completely naked. Also 16 years old. So the statues by the Tibetans, they always use a 16 year old for the female deities. Because in Tibet, the average lifespan is 50 or 55 years. <coughs> because they don't have good hygiene there. So they have short lifespan. 
and These days, 18 is considered adult, entering into adulthood, but in Tibet or in India, in the past, it's different because they got married like at 14 or 16 is at the height of their youth. So they use 16 year old and she's very gorgeous gorgeous and sometimes very fierce some are fierce and some are gorgeous and women are like that oh, when they got mad I thought the men are very fierce Actually, the women are even more so. You know, when they got fears, uh, I, I, would, I would be scared. Then it would be my turn to scrub the toilet. No, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the man. She has the tender side, but also the fierce or the wrathful side. Most Dakinis are like that. When I was young, As you know, when my mother gave birth to me, and because I was born premature, prematurely, my father was angry. <coughs> so I was sent to my grandma to be raised, and then for a little while, and then she passed away, and then I was passed on to my aunt. And she would carry me on her back uh, to do her work as a maid, uh, to wash clothes. And then uh, there was a director of the electrical company that liked her, and she got married. And then she told my mom, well, I cannot bring your son when I get married, right? So I'm returned to my home. And then, you know, it's very very strange, but I never call my father. I never call him dad. I always call mom until I know my sumo. And then Simu asked, why, why don't you never call your father dad or father? I don't know. Until I went to the military school, I went to Taipei in Lingxi Street. I live in my aunt's house. And then my aunt told me the whole story. And then I knew why I never called my father, father or dad. So when I was young, I was beaten by my dad. And I never cried when I was beaten. And because I didn't cry, I was beaten even more until it's really bad, then I would drop a drop of tear, and then he said, oh, you, you still can cry? And maybe he still didn't feel it's enough, so he continued to beat me. So I was beaten almost every single day.
And then in high school, I would turn my head and told my dad, I will remember you forever. And this is how you beat me. You beat me until the the this wood wood wooden sword, a very thick wooden sword was uh, broken into two. And when I was very small, maybe a baby, I don't remember, maybe two or three. I didn't want. I didn't eat, and my dad would come behind me and pick me up. <coughs> and throw me. And that's the cement floor. <coughs> he was just like throwing a basketball. Oh my God. And the four heavenly kings knew, immediately descended, and hold, held me, and slowly placed me down on the ground, and I didn't die. <coughs> I should have died. I could have died. And my mom saw it from, from afar and she thought, oh, this time he would die. And then when they took a look, uh, he's still breathing. I almost died. But there's a cause and effect here. There is karma here, because when I was a king before, my father was one of my ministers, <coughs> and I mischarged him with corruption, and in actually he did not do that, and I imprisoned him for 19 years. So in this life, we were reincarnated, and become his son, and he beat it, beat me for 19 years, and he almost killed me. Good thing that the four heavenly kings uh, helped me. Oh, what a pity, but that's karma. So that's cause and effect from the past. It's very scary, it's like this. Now we're equal. After I practice Buddhism, my heart becomes soft and I have no more hatred. I am respectful toward him. Actually, if at that time there is a DNA, DNI or DNA? If there is a DNA test, then he would know that I am his son. So he always had that. He never thought that I was his son. So that was why. So we had to open that knot. Actually, after I practiced Buddhism, I respected my own father, and then he also took refuge, and he decided Guan Yin Bodhisattva, and he followed me everywhere. When I went north, when I went south, he followed. And I gave him empowerments, and we were on good terms. And then all the hatred and the ill feelings from the past were all resolved. <coughs> So why did I say that? Because there's a joke like this. When I was young, I was beaten by, by the mom, and John cried, and John and mom said, no crying, if you cry, I'll, I'll beat you more. And John not wanted to be beaten. He didn't. Um, he didn't didn't want to cry, and the mom, seeing that, said, "Oh, you're so stubborn. You didn't even cry. Now, I'll beat you again." And then Xiao Ming said, "What should I do then?" 
When I was alone, when I was young, I would cry, and I would say, "Oh, Dad, what do you want me to do?" So there's a problem in each family, but there's always this. Mats and resentments, <coughs> and you need to understand to use Buddha Dharma to untie them, to untie the knots and the resentments and the ill feelings from the past. <laughs> Only this way, then we can be happy. So there's visualization for Doje Pamu. There is a mantra, and also the mudra. Then we can practice the response practice. If you practice the inner fire or two more, to ignite the inner fire, you need to visualize Doje Pamu, and in your body she's like. A ball of fire in that palace of the、uh, fire ignition, ignition, the fire ignition, igniting the fire. There are many methods to practice inner fire, but one of them is when you visualize Doje Pamu. It's very easy to enter into samadhi. That's why it's called the inner fire practice or the meditation. In the fire meditation of Doje Pamu, in this meditation, you would be able to obtain great bliss and a great radiance, and it can burn away all the afflictions of your body and all the pains and the sicknesses of your body can be burned to ashes, and including the、uh, the affliction that's leaking. <coughs> Now let's talk about Hevajra. On chapter thirty-nine, on the tantric sika or trifold training, if there is a Mahayana or Tantrayana practitioner with high attainments, read this article. He would definitely understand that it is correct, because with non-leaking of the body. Only then you would have the energy to teach Buddha Dharma and to help sentient beings to spread Buddha Dharma. And without the spirit, or actually the light drops, it comes from the spirit, the energy. So the jing spirits or semen, that's light drops. That comes from chi. So light drops in men are the semen, and light drops in women are the blood primarily. So we need to practice until the light drops are non-leaking, and the women should stop their menstruation or bleeding. They stop their bleeding in menstruation. So with the non-leaking of the body, one would attain nirmana kaya. Then you become a physical body of the Tathagata, and the physical body can、uh, widely deliver sentient beings. And the non-leaking of the speech, <coughs> it means your speech is pure. That's very important. If the body leaks. Then you would become a balloon that has lost the air, lost the air, or like the tires, or that has lost the air, or balloon that has lost the air, and the body is in dysfunction. So that's why tantric practitioner has to attain the non-leaking of the body, from the leaking body to become the non-leaking of the body. 
then you would become the Vajra Yogi with great power. Then you would have power because your energy would be full. Then you don't get sick easily. And with non speaking, leaking of the speech, one would attain Sambhogakaya or the reward body or light body. Because when you talk, the chi would leak. Normally, you should practice chi so that you have full chi. Your chi is full. And when chi enters into the central channel, it would generate the light of the light drops. And when you seize these lights, you would reach the realm of the Sambhogakaya because the lights are very radiant and very dignified, very beautiful. Then you would reach the realm of Sambhogakaya. So with the non-leaking of the speech, one would attain Sambhogakaya. With the non-leaking of the mind, one would attain Dharmakaya. The most important thing is to leak out all the afflictions that in your mind there is no affliction at all. You are not worried uh, for your families, for your children, for your spouse. Or if you work with your boss or with your companions or for the country, when you have no afflictions whatsoever, that's called the non-leaking of the mind, that the mind does not leak anymore. This is very important. Although, if your body is not leaking, your mind is still leaking, and your speech doesn't leak, but your mind is still leaking, that's not good. If you still have affliction, then there would be pains and ailments. The more you are afflicted, like what people say, uh, when you grieve for one night, then all your hair would turn white. How could that happen? Actually, in worrying, you're, it's, it's nothing happening, but because that's affliction of the mind, and that's leaking of the mind, then it would affect your body. So it's the same, you need to train your mind to be non-leaking. At this time, that would be the purity of the body, speech, and mind, and you would attain dharmakaya. This, the realm of the dharmakaya is very high, and there are bases for this. If you do research for this, then you would know. There are a lot of afflictions in this world. There's this joke. I saw a man hit a woman. And the friend asked, did you stop them? Yes, I told them. It's not a hero to hit a woman. Why don't you hit a man? <coughs> and then the friend asked, and then what? And then I became unconscious. Didn't know anything. What happened? So in this world, getting along with others, sometimes there is some are arguments and sometimes also fights, physical fights or verbal fight, fightings. But spiritual cultivators should avoid those because we are the non-leaking. <coughs> and 
and we are not we are not leaking of the body of the speech and of the mind <coughs> the mind has to be non leaking too only this way you can cultivate spiritually when your spiritual cultivation has speech the non leaking of the body speech and mind this is an attainment there is already an attainment in the non leaking of the body and there is an attainment of the non leaking of the speech and even greater attainment if you reach the non leaking of the mind so this book on the exposition on hevajra includes all the phenomena they are precious pearls they're very precious pearls they are like strains of pearls that are very precious <coughs> So, uh, in studying Buddha Dharma, it can it cannot be leaking too. It has to be complete. You need to understand the tantrayana, the step by step procedures. Don't be uh, greedy. Don't be greedy, uh, or don't be too ambitious. Like the fire offering, there is the outer fire offering, like the homa, when you see the fire. And then there's the inner fire offering. That's when Vajavarahi, in your, inside your body, you ignite Vajavarahi, and then your whole body are in flame, and you make offering of your whole body everything inside your body, the body, speech, and mind. The body, speech, and mind are the outer offering, and the qi channel and light drops are the inner firing. And then there's the secret offering. When you have fruition or attainments in the tantric practices, then you are the secret offering. So you make offering of your body, speech, and mind, and chi channel and light drops. So homa, what we do, that's the outer fire offering. And the inner fire offering is vajavarahi, in flame inside your body, and you make offering of vajavarahi. And you make offering of your chi light drops and channels to your yidam, that's inner for offering. That's secret offering. And then the top secret offering, that's unspeakable. The secret offering is unspeakable. The topmost secret offering is when you reach fruition. And you make offering of your whole self to all sentient beings. That's the topmost secret offering. So please don't miss anything in your Dharma practice. In the language class, they talk about uh, use of words. You cannot miss anything. For example, a student said, if someone give me a gun, <coughs> oh, gun is disallowed in Taiwan, in America, it's okay. A toy gun. Well, that's not right, too. Uh, John uh, find it to answer. <laughs> so, so if the difference would be, instead of giving me a gun, it would be giving me a shot then my life would be different. So that's why in our Dharma practice, we cannot miss anything. In each of the practice procedure, do not miss anything. In the response practices, please do not miss anything. If you miss anything, then maybe it would end in a different result. Also, don't misunderstand. Uh, at dawn, uh, 
In the park, there is a girl that is uh, bring, taking a book and uh, reading a foreign language out loud. And there's an old elderly couple walking by, and the elderly man asks, Are you talking English? And the girl said, No, Russian. And then the elderly woman Oh, this is also a play over in Chinese. So Russian also sounds like crocodile. <laughs> Russian. Russian. Russian language. Russian language. Yi is English. The language for Americans and English. But Ying Yi also, I mean, it's the same sound in Chinese. It could, it could mean, it could also mean like the language of the eagle, and the Russian also mean like the language of the goose or geese. And then I wrote a verse. Have I just face? Transform anger into joy. So Hevadra was originally wrathful, but her face changed into bliss. And river sands transformed into beads of pearls. So you were all originally sands, but by spiritual cultivation, you become pearls, precious pearls. And the lotus blossoming all over like the Western paradise. So the literal meaning Western so happy country. That's also the realm of the utmost bliss in the West. The lotus. Blossoming everywhere. And the almost blissful ones the almost blissful one is Master Lu. And because all the sentient beings become beads of pearls at this time, then Master Lu would be most happy. So spiritual cultivation is a very happy thing, but it also full of suffering because in your su spiritual cultivation you have to endure uh, a lot of different things even doing a tantric practice in front of the altar or practicing the nine cycle Buddha breathing or the treasury's energy yoga or the mantra chanting or to let the chi enter into the central channels to ignite the inner fire, to let the light drops melt and drip, so externally to purify the body, speech, and mind, and internally the purity of the chi, of the channels, and the purity of the light drops generating light. <coughs> and at that time, you would be able to generate emptiness, radiance or light, and bliss. And that's eternal. That's eternal and unlimited. And then you would know the true meaning of spiritual cultivation and the true value of spiritual cultivation. 
spiritual cultivation has good value, has value. To pass all the different tests, the different grades, and that in the future you would attain radiance, you would gain, attain the Buddha nature, you would gain the great bliss, and that your body would always feel very relaxed and very happy, and that you have no troubles, no affliction whatsoever. And moreover, you can generate radiance and light, and then you use this to deliver sentient beings, then you would be forever happy. In a coffee shop, uh, the server came and said, uh, smoking is not allowed here. And the man walked two steps. How about here? No, that's also not allowed. And then he shook his head and walked another few steps and then asked again, now it's okay here? And then he replied, no, still not allowed. And then this person walked toward the road. Now I can smoke here, right? And then, <coughs> and then uh, uh, the server said, but uh, your cigarettes is gone. You're still asking? So in spiritual cultivation, it should be like this, not to teach you to smoke. But you have to do it every single day. Like the smokers, they have to smoke every day. So we have to cultivate, we have to practice every single day. We have to make time to practice, step by step. Then you would definitely have attainments. Finally, you would be able to smoke. That means that's the success of your spiritual cultivation. How long have I talked? An hour and ten minutes? <laughs> then I should say Omani Penny home. Thank you everyone. <laughs>